What are dative covalent bonds? Well, first of all, let me draw out a water molecule using the Lewis structure. Oxygen's in group 16, so it has six valence electrons, represented by those dots. And hydrogen's in group 1, one valence electron, represented by the crosses. The two bonds that I've circled there, made of a dot and a cross, are regular covalent bonds. An electron from each of the atoms is shared in this bond. And the two I've just circled at the top there are lone pairs. Both electrons in a lone pair are from one atom. Now, if I bring in a hydrogen ion, that's a hydrogen atom that's lost its electron, it can actually turn that lone pair into a dative covalent bond. So a dative covalent bond is where both electrons in the bond are from only one atom. So I've just made the hydronium ion, H3O+. So how would I draw this out? Well, the dative covalent bond is drawn with an arrow, not just a line, but an arrow. Don't forget the square brackets and the plus as well. And it behaves just like a regular covalent bond, except that both electrons in the bond are from only one atom, not one from each atom. OK, let me draw out the ammonia molecule and now bring in a hydrogen atom. Now notice there's three electrons there trying to make a bond, and that's not going to happen. Only two electrons in a bond. And so this will only work if I add, again, a hydrogen ion. I don't want that extra electron. I just want it, an H plus to be added. A dative covalent bond is formed. And now this is the ammonium ion. So the ammonium ion has to be NH4 plus. It can't be NH4. I need to lose an electron somewhere along the way. This is the hydrogen cyanide molecule. Hydrogen cyanide smells like almonds. Marzipan smells like almonds, Semtex, plastic explosive, smells like almonds and looks like marzipan and almonds smell like almonds. So just avoid almonds. If I draw boxes around each atom, see hydrogen is in group one, it has one electron from itself. Carbon group 14 has four and nitrogen group 15 has five. Ah, so there's no dative covalent bonds there. Every electron can be allocated to its parent atom in the bond, like I showed. But for carbon monoxide, if I draw out the Lewis structure for that and put the boxes around, each atom is apparently involved with five electrons. And that can't be true. Uh, carbon's in group 14. It can only put four electrons into the uh, Lewis structure. And oxygen's in group 16. It can only put six in. Ah, so there must be a dative covalent bond. Indeed, in green are the six electrons from the oxygen. So once again, let me show you how to draw it out. You put an arrow for that dative covalent bond. It behaves no differently to regular covalent bonds. Carbon monoxide will also asphyxiate you, just like cyanide, but it doesn't smell of almonds. So now I'm worried if there's no smell. Some quick questions. Can you draw these out and find the dative covalent bonds? There's one there, boron has three electrons, so that must be a dative covalent bond from the nitrogen. And oxygen, six valence electrons, so also another dative covalent bond from the nitrogen. Well, that was weird. Uh, for high level only, you need to know that Lewis acids and ligands have dative covalent bonds. So Lewis acids are electron pair donors. And ligands can make a dative covalent bond with a central transition metal atom or ion. Now, I'm unsure whether you need to show the lone pairs or not. One textbook says you do, one textbook it seems to be missing. So let me draw in an orange these lone pairs that the dative covalent bonds were made from. And we are done.